Sceptile is back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it's one of the greatest starters for a few reasons. It has solid offensive stats with base 105 special attack, along with 85 attack which allows it to be flexible. More importantly though, it's super fast with its base 120 speed. It can be ran with Swords Dance paired with Leaf Blade and coverage like Earthquake, but we can take this a step further with its ability Unburden. This is able to double its speed upon using an item, and if we give it the Psychic Seed and switch into the field that has Psychic Terrain up, it grabs a special defense boost and activates the Unburden ability. This also pairs extremely nicely with the move Acrobatics, which becomes a 110 power flying move if the user has no held item. Sceptile can now easily get the speed and offenses to become a huge threat, and it's super fun. Alright, so look, Sceptile is one of the most fun starters. I'm really happy this thing is back. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's free. It takes you only a second. I promise you won't regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. So I've got myself a pretty wacky team. It's kind of what I'm all about around here. And I decided to lead off with one of the wackiest, which is actually a Choice Specs Rhyperior. I figure, you know, I bring out the rock here. I can kind of bluff the fact that I might go for like a stealth rock. And then instead hit him with a special attacking Scorching Sands and just do some fun stuff. Iron Treads does not want any of the smoke and they decide to instead switch right into uh, the Rillaboom. So of course Rillaboom being locked into my Scorching Sands here is not super ideal. I wish I had the balls to go for the Fire Blast turn one, but instead this thing comes in, spills some grass all over the field, and I do go for that Scorching Sands. Now the good thing is the Pocket Sand actually get enough in this guy's eyes to where it burns him, and that is extremely nice. Even the guy on the left is jumping for joy seeing, you know, the old, the old burn come in clutch there. And that's actually, that's fine. I, I really don't have a lot that wants to come in here. My team is pretty situational in what it needs to do, so I just decide to stay in. I'm gonna go for some more chip on the Scorching. As they do predict the switch, go for the knockoff and actually get rid of the choice specs. Guy does not like how we look in our glasses, and that actually works for me, because now, after I throw a little bit more pocket sand at him, I can then switch my moves, and Rhyperior, for whatever reason, gets coverage of, like, everything under the damn sun. So, with this thing burnt, I know that I can take pretty much any physical attack it wants to throw at me, and it's time to unleash the beast that is either Ice Beam or Fire Blast Rhyperior. I opt for the Fire Blast because I'm like, you know what, it's fine. We need all the damage we can possibly get. Uh, they go for the Drain Punch, doesn't do a whole lot here. And now we get to roll the dice for a classic Fire Blast, which is always fun. And we do actually end up connecting. I don't know how the hell we Fire Blast, but this Rhyperior may have just taken care of a Rillaboom in like the most unconventional way. <laughs> and it's actually pretty damn hilarious. The best thing is we even still get to soak up a little bit of health uh, from the old grass, and Rhyperior's feeling pretty solid. At this point, my guy's probably about confused as shit, but they do get a free switch, and they decide to go into the Sandy Shocks, where I'm thinking, please click Stealth Rock so that I can fire off an Ice Beam at you. Unfortunately, however, they do click the Earth Power, and down goes the Rhyperior, who doesn't look like it was going to play, you know, a huge role in this match, so the fact that I was able to take care of the Rillaboom is kind of hilarious. Uh, so the good news is, upon the free switch, I can now try to get some stuff going. And that comes with this here spider who's here to lay down some sticky web. So I know that I can outspeed this thing, but instead they actually move first, hit me with that earth power, and it would have knocked me down to my so focus ash regardless, but the grassy terrain actually does reduce the ground damage. But more importantly, this tells me that this is a choice scarf sandy shocks, which definitely caught me off guard a bit there. So here's the thing, I do have a levitating mon in the form of the Flygon, but I have the opportunity to try to get Cinderace in for free here if I can let Galvantula go down. Really, all I needed this for was to set up that Sticky Web, and while we're losing Mons left and right, I, I'm confident that in the late game, we have a win condition. So, at this point, it kind of puts me in a little bit of a weird spot. The reason is, I can go into Cinderace, who is supposed to outspeed these damn ancient magnets, but with them being Choice Scarf, I know that I just die to an Earth Power. So I'm actually kind of forced to commit the Terra here, um, so I'm going to go for that Terra Water. What that's going to do is allow me to live in Earth Power. And it turns out, all you got to do in order to make that happen is put on a nice little silly Water Fountain hat. So we go with the Terra Water here. And I'm really, I'm giving up a lot of resources just to get this Sticky Web on my side of the field. It's, trust me, it's ridiculous. And is it that viable? Probably not. But is it fun and stupid? Yes, that's what I'm all about. I go for that Court Change. They're probably even more confused than they were against the Choice Specs Rhyperior, but I bring the Sticky Web over to my side, and we are feeling pretty good about this. So, I actually want Cinderace to go down here. I get a little bit of chip damage with a Sucker Punch before we do, but we know that an Earth Power is just going to finish it off. So, we're down to our final three mons, but as it turns out, your boy only needs one to turn this match around. So, we have exactly what, set up what we needed to. The Sticky Web is generally here for Contrary Malamar to get a speed boost, but... 
The secondary mode of this team is that old Forrest Gump's ass can come in and touch the sticky web. Ordinarily, absolutely detrimental to what this thing can do, but after the speed drop, I am then able to pop the white herb item, which not only brings my stats back to normal, but also doubles my speed and the fact that now I've used up my item and Unburden is active. Now, this is also the perfect Pokemon to set that up against because I know being locked into Earth Power, I can take an attack easily and get up a free Swords Dance, which is great. So, they're not going to switch into this fat ass. Deoxys defense is big noodle ass is actually kind of a problem. It's the only thing that can really take attacks from me. But the good news is it doesn't have a lot of firepower in return to take care of Sceptile. So I'm actually going to go for a second Swords Dance. I'm going to need to be the sharpest Sceptile in the damn forest uh, to be able to take care of this thing. And they actually end up going for that Thunder Wave. So that's actually pretty damn crucial because even though my speed was doubled, now we're paralyzed and it's cut in half. So I'm at my original speed, theoretically, and this Sceptile is just all confused on his speed stat at this point. But... I can actually break through, still being faster, go for that Leaf Blade, nearly do enough to take care of Deoxys' defense, and this allows them to set up the Stealth Rock. But that's honestly fine. Listen, I'm actually still, while Paralyzing Me does kind of ruin my Unburdened strats, I'm actually in a position where Subtile can still make some stuff happen. So I go for another Leaf Blade, get lucky, I'm like, damn, that was two turns in a row, I didn't get Paralyzed. We absolutely love to see it, because now Subtile is at plus four attack, neutral speed and we are still rolling so they decide to bring in for alligator on the empty switch and as it turns out i'm actually naturally faster than this thing sitting at my normal speed i know that i can outspeed this and if i can get a leaf blade off it's easily enough to kill i do outspeed don't get paralyzed and slice his ass up into gator stew critical hit absolutely does not matter there but down goes the for alligator and you cannot count out the septile even being paralyzed because of that unburden being active uh, we're still in a great spot so now they're gonna bring in the big guns. Like, all right, no more fucking around. I'm gonna bring in the Giraffe Raikou. This thing comes in, gets the booster energy special attack. And listen to me very closely when I say this is the craziest shit ever because I do break through the para again, still faster. And at plus four, an earthquake is gonna take care of uh, the new beast. So down goes that thing. And Subtile is literally on an absolutely insane run of not getting paralyzed right now. And I'm gonna try to just keep it rolling as long as I can. Sandy Shocks comes in. Now this thing is gonna be faster than me but it doesn't have anything neutral to hit me with other than flash cannon i break through the paralysis again and leaf blade takes care of it i i, I don't know if buddy's thunder wave just didn't work um but septile just apparently does not give a shit so we're absolutely running through the team while paralyzed and now they're down to their final pokemon which is going to be the iron tread so to finish off the craziest match ever i, I don't get paralyzed again somehow and an earthquake does break through and takes care of it. So we actually had coverage on their entire team and the extreme luck with the paralysis was truly my best friend there. And honestly, something I'm glad I wish I documented because that I'm probably due to get fully paralyzed like the next 25 times, but I'll take it because that match was insane. But it was not enough because I do have one more game here with an entirely different team and different septile mode. I mean, still similar. However, now we're working with the Psychic Seed and Psychic Train. But the craziest part about all of this is that looking at my opponent's team, they have Sticky Webs with the Cinderace and two Contrary Mods. And I'm thinking, oh my, this guy is going to straight up use the exact strategy that I've been messing around with on my Malamar team against me. And this is not something I've ever seen before. I'm convinced. They may have seen my videos, but <laughs> let's get into it. So here's the thing. I have the benefit of knowing what their team is kind of built to do. So with that in mind, I can kind of try to play around it, but there's really not a great answer because I actually don't have hazard control. I could try to rapid spin away their sticky web before they're able to quite change it to their side, but I decide to lead off with the croissant ears. I'm just going to end up going for a nice little expanding force as, of course, the Galvantula sets up the sticky web like a nice little spider. And I expand some forces on his ass like a spider you find in the shower early in the morning. So he does end up living with the Focus Ash, of course. And this isn't a great matchup for me because now I'm kind of forced to take a bug buzz at this point. I know that I can live at least one. And my main priority was just being able to get up that psychic terrain so that at least Sceptile in the back while activating Unburden should be faster than their contrary Pokemon coming in on their own sticky web if they're able to, to set it up. So they go for the bug buzz before they end up going down to one more expanding force. And now this opens the door for the damn rabbit to come in and do its court change and stuff. I'm just thinking how ridiculous this is that I was literally just using this strategy and I've never seen anybody ever attempt it. But Cinderace comes in and the good thing is I can hit him with an expanding force in that psychic terrain does so much damage that it'll actually 
knock this thing out, I just have to give them the sticky web. I'm like, you know what? If you want to <laughs> go for all the resources it takes to set this up, um, I'm, I'm fine with that. So I can allow them to claim the webs as their own and then I can just expand that ass into next Tuesday. That takes care of the Cinderace. And while we are rolling here, we now leave ourselves pretty vulnerable to the Malamar. If you've seen my Malamar video, you know that this thing can get out of hand you know, pretty quickly. So it comes in, it touches the sticky web. Instead of getting that drop, it does in fact get the speed boost. And it's basically like this thing has a built-in choice scarf at this point. And also, it's faster than me, and I kind of just have to give up a superpower, which instead of dropping, of course, gives him the plus one attack and plus one defense. So Malamar is looking evil as hell over there. And I've, I feel like I've done this to myself. However, I must find a way out of this. So here's the thing. I can actually go into Rampardos. And even though I'm Choice Scarf, I should still unfortunately be just a few points slower than this thing. Because Rampardos' thick ass thighs don't get going too quick. So my plan to kind of stop this is I'm actually going to go for the Terra Flying. Now that's going to make it so that I resist their superpower. And luckily since they only have plus one attack boost at this point, I should be able to take it and then fire off a nice little head smash. Uh, to get the amount of damage that I need. So I do still have the Sceptile in the back, who when I come in with that Unburden, I will be faster, but I'm not gonna be able to quite knock that thing out unless I have some chip on it. So I have to commit the Terra here, and it actually turns out I do go first. That tells me that they're running adamant nature, and the Head Smash nearly actually knocks this thing out even with the plus one defense. It doesn't quite do it for me though, but it does get it to a range where I'm not super afraid of the Malamar. And plus I can actually still take a superpower, which is saying a lot considering hey, this Rampardos is made out of glass bones and paper skin. But they heal up a little bit with the leftovers and a, we now know that the head smash just goes first. So I'm just gonna commit that. And they do wanna conserve the Malamar for later as they decide to switch into their own Rampardos. They say, hey, dinosaur party, let's get into it. However. This thing comes in, he does not get the benefit from its own sticky web. It does, in fact, just get the, the drop. But, Head Smash from Rampardos does so much that it kills a Rampardos. It just straight up, this thing, again, has no defenses. And that just straight up knocks that thing out, which is actually pretty crazy. Sadly, though, I do knock myself out in recoil, and there's just dinosaurs dying all over the damn place. Fossils will be found, you know, millions of years from now on this crazy battlefield. But here's the thing, my psychic terrain is actually wearing out and I don't have Ndidi to be able to come in and set it back up if it goes away. So I'm kind of forced to bring in the Sceptile here as they're just gonna go right back into Malamar. He says, hello webs, go ahead and drop my speed real quick and I'll turn that shit around and the squid is fast. But since I bring in Sceptile on the grape juice, I'm able to touch it, that's gonna activate my psychic seed which not only gives me a special defense boost, but also activates that unburden. And now we are zooming out here. Absolutely fastest septile on this side of the Mississippi. So I'm faster than the squid. I can chop him up and we're having calamari for dinner. Down goes the Malamar. I would have been extremely disappointed if I got Malamared by my own Malamar strat. <laughs> Uh, but there is still one contrary Pokemon left, and that comes in the form of this damn Superior. He comes in, touches the sticky web, and grabs himself a boost as well. But I do actually have the coverage. And I also know that being a Superior stand myself, I know that this thing doesn't have uh, the amount of firepower to actually knock me out here. Plus, with my special defense boost from that Psychic Seed, we can actually also use that to our benefit. But they end up going for the Protect there, probably just to kind of scout out what I'm going for. But it also tells me... This could be more of like a defensive, potentially like a sub seed, superior, something like that. As they decide, I'm not going to play that shit, and they end up going into the Kilowattril. Now this thing, it of course is flying above the sticky webs, but also it does kind of wall my Sceptile. I don't have anything to hit this thing for neutral, but what I do have is a pretty strong Leaf Blade and a special defense boost, meaning I should be able to take a flying attack from this thing. You know, hopefully it's not a hurricane at least, but it turns out, it, it, I thought hurricane season was over. They do have the hurricane. Luckily though, because of that Psychic Seed, I'm barely able to live and also barely able to pick this thing off with one more Leaf Blade, which takes care of the Kilowattril and also it takes care of the biggest threat at this point. So now they are down to their final Pokemon being the Superior. Now, I know that I've taken enough chip to the point where this thing should be able to take care of me, um, but I can at least still fire off a nice little acrobatics. I am still faster with my speed being doubled and there's only being 1.5 times. They then fire off a knockoff, which I actually live on one HP, which is honestly just kind of insane. This is kind of a, a different superior here as it is working with more support, but living on one HP just solidifies the fact that, you know, Sceptile 
is the greatest and one more acrobatics is gonna finish off the superior so i thought that that was just honestly insane going up against a team like that it's always a lot of fun it just kind of makes for a goofy game and of course they're not the most viable strategies but they are gonna catch people off guard and they're super crazy to play so hopefully you guys enjoyed i thought it was just a wild circumstance and uh, i had a lot of fun with it i will catch you next time peace out